What's up, DC Nation? Welcome to the video on Nightwing. And guys, today we are going with the finale issue of this whole Joker War tie-in storyline. Now, this is actually the finale to the whole Rick Grayson saga, too. We saw Dick Grayson get shot by a KG Beast, and then he lost his memory, became Rick Grayson, and pretty much I stopped reading Nightwing comics. Like, that's just the short end of it, right? But, pretty much I stopped reading Nightwing comics, I got caught up on it, and finally we started seeing, so yeah, Rick Grayson got, con got controlled by the talents, then he's now controlled by the Joker, we got Batgirl in this book, we got Punchline in this book, we got now Tim Drake and Red Hood in this book, and now it's the storyline tie into Joker where it's actually not been that bad. And Dan uh, Jurgens isn't a bad writer. I just felt like it's really hard for him to handle a character like Rick Grayson. Like, it's easy to write Dick Grayson. Well, I can't really say, like, I see a lot of people pull it off. You know, a lot of writers are write and write. If you write him in character, he's an awesome character. You do a lot of great storylines. But Rick Grayson, not like people like him. So it's hard for Dan Jurgens to do this whole saga and still keep people to stay tuned in this comic. But at least a lot of people got back into Nightwing comics because they heard that this whole Joker Wars storyline will lead up to the return of Nightwing in Nightwing number 75. Which, that's just, I'll get more into that by the end of this video. But, before we dive into this issue, guys, all you need to know is really that Batgirl, she's escaped a Nightwing, Joker, and Punchline to go save these children at this children's hospital that's about to blow up by the Joker. And then we got pretty much Red Hood, Tim Drake. They met up with uh, Dickie Boy, which they think is actually Dick Grayson. They think he has his memory back when actually he's about to mess him up, all right? Now, will he keep this facade up for a long time? Like, say, oh, yeah, I'm Dick Grayson. I got my memory back. Or will he be like, nah. I'm Dicky Boy, I'm the son of Joker, screw you both. We'll see, but without further ado guys, let's dive into Nightwing number 74. Now, this issue opens up with Bay, who has been the girlfriend of Rick Grayson during this whole saga. Now, she's right through Gotham City, she says, I hate Gotham City, always have, barely know my way around, but I'm here to help Rick. And that's what I intend to do. Talk to Barbara, and she said, don't worry, bae, I'm on it. Haven't heard from her of since. And that was actually in Nightwing number 72. And then she says, been looking all over town, but there's no sign of him anywhere. Now I'm down uh, to chase these sirens, because there's trouble somewhere Rick will almost uh, certainly respond to. Then she says, whoa. And then we see Nightwing, or Dicky Boy, with Team Drake and Red Hood. They're fighting off these clowns. And these clowns say, check it out. And they're like, dead heroes, you mean? And Tim Drake says, nice to have you back, bro. And Dick Boy says, likewise, Dr uh, Drake. And then Red Hood says, bomb the hospital. Had to have to cut our way through these clowns to deactivate before it blows. That's when Dicky Boy says, bomb, like boom time. K uh, kitty, uh, bodies strewn in the rubble. That's when Red Hood says, what are you talking about? Wait. You're close. I recognize them. That was you who attacked me a few hours ago. And guys, so y'all know, in Red Hood number 48, we actually saw Red Hood fight off against Dickie Boy, a.k.a. Rick Grayson, and I actually covered that whole um, tie-in issue on this channel. I'll actually put it in the eye of record right here so you get caught up on that. But continuing, Dickie Boy says, Mr. Red Hood, I'm offended. That took you this long to figure it out. And we see Dickie Boy grabs King Drake out by the head, pulls him, kicks Red Hood in the face, and the base says, Rick has lost to whoever the Joker did to, to work him as guy in wars. That's what Tim Drake says, you aren't. And uh, Dig Boy says, Mr. Good? Ah, uh, surprise. And he continues to say, when I uh, kicked the hood's butt a couple hours ago, I, I wore one of those clown masks. And he says, now I get to come out of the toy box and be me. A knee's red wood in the stomach. Guys, it's a really messed up knee. And he says, as for my name, you can call me. Dicky boy. And that's what Punchline says. You must be proud, Papa J. And Joker says, oh, quite, Mr. Dear Punchline. Did you see the way he hammered little Robbie? And that's what Punchline says. Takes after his father. And Joker says, uh, that prudish Dick Grayson might not hit below the belt, but my Dicky boy knows no limit. That's what he goes to the Punchline says. I almost forgot. The bomb? You did your bit. And Punchline says, armed and set to detonate in about 12 minutes. And that Joker says, guaranteed to bring the house down. However did I get to, uh, so lucky has to be me. And Punchline says, by giving me the job of planting the bomb. And Joker says, duh. So Joker and Punchline are teaming up. But guys, one question I have, all right? Now, this actually came up last issue after I read it, but I didn't really go over it. Now, if pretty much uh, Dicky Boy, he's supposed to, he's believing this whole thing in his head that he's the son of Joker. He's never met the Bat Family. He's never met Bruce Wayne. So how in last issue just goes into the Bat Family like that? 
be like, yeah, I'm Dick Grayson, I'm this, that, that, when he believes that he's the son of Joker. Like, does that really make sense? Like, it's pretty much like he's in a, he feels like he's in an alternate reality where he's the son of Joker, the Batman's evil, he's never been the Bat family, so how would he know about Tim Drake? How you know about Red Hood? Now, there may be like a simple answer to that, but for now, I feel like it's a plot hole. You guys, give me your thoughts on that down below. Now, continuing, what we see is that Tim Drake, he's dragged by these clowns. He's like, this is twisted. Nightwing is. And Red Hood's like, work with these clowns. He kicks the clown in the face, and then uh, Dicky Boys uh, grabs Red Hood by the neck, and he's like, crazy talk, Hoodster. And then he says, I do not work with them. He hits Red Hood in the face, and then he pretty much uh, acrobats back. Pretty much uh, just flips back, and he says, I'm Dicky Boy, the boss's kid. And Red Hood tries to punch him, but misses. That's when Dicky Boy lands on his feet and says, that makes me management. And Red Hood says, this game messy, Drake. The bomb is yours to take care of. And Tim Drake says, on it. And Red Hood's like, Dicky Boy is mine. He has a gun, ready to go. He's ready to kill Dick Grayson. And Tim Drake reminds him, uh, remember, he's family, don't hurt him. And Red Hood says, that's up to him. If he steps over the line, I'll be more than happy to meet him there. That's when these clowns go up to Red Hood, they're like, heard the hood is tough. Uh, one way to find out. And then they say, the hood is mine, boys. Butt kicking sequel time. So they start hitting Red in the face. And that Diggy Boy kicks him, actually knees him in the stomach again. And says, in this story, you play the part of Little Red Riding Hood. The role of the big bad wolf is played by Moi. And then Red Hood says, up. Oh. He hits the ground. And then Diggy Boy continues to say, naturally, this time the wolf wins. With the hood getting chewed up and spit out. Now, Bay is watching this, guys. And she says, my God, there's no doubt that Rex under the uh, Joker's control, makes him capable of anything, maybe even murder. How do I stop this? How in the world will we ever get him back? Now, that's what Joker says. How Lucius is this? Our Diggy Boy has a chance to finish what I started years ago by snuffing out Jason for good. Now, that's when Batgirl kicks Punchline Joker both in the face, and she says, You want to talk finishes? Fine by me, Joker, starting with yours. And Punchline surprise, Joker surprise, and Joker says, You, I shall watch you off the roof when I have a chance. And Batgirl kicks in the face and says, And I should aim that rod at your heart. But here we are, so I'll go with stomping your face instead, especially since how you have what I need. And then she grabs the crystal, the crystal that controls Dicky Boy, and says, This must be uh, the crystal you're using to control Nightwing. And Joker says, No, that's mine. Now, guys, this is a really interesting fight right here, an interesting sequence. You can see Batgirl just show up and kick uh, Joker in the face. For some reason, I just really like that. Because you know how much Joker has inflicted trauma on Barbara Gordon? It's cool to just see her get Romentro away. Just to kick him in the face, beat him up. And I like that, right? I really like how Dan uh, Jurgens actually treats uh, Barbara Gordon as a character. Now, as we continue, we didn't see the clowns. So like, check it out. The hood is down. Uh, Koopa did Grace time. So, uh, Red Hood's on the ground. That's when uh, Red Hood says, you might have the gun, but you don't have the stones to pull the trigger. Now, some Diggy Boy starts shooting at Red Hood and then points the gun directly at his head. And he says, Next shot goes through the eyeball. You get to pick right or left. But that's when Batgirl kicks in the face and says, how about neither? That's when Tim Drake says, figured the bomb would be in the hospital's basement. And I was right. Should be easy enough to disarm. And whoa, 39 seconds to go and that man maniac has wires from every color of the rainbow. And that says, too tangled to trace. And only one deactivates it. Which one? So we see Tim Drake struggling to figure this out. If he doesn't figure this out, a bunch of people will die. At the same time, we see Dickie Boy. He's kicking back her in the face and he says, You again can't see that I'm not that interested. So the crystal falls to the ground. Then Dickie Boy starts walking toward Batgirl. And he says, Should have flown off while you, you have the chance, Batwench. Uh, time to say goodnight for good. Now Batgirl says, you won't, you won't hurt me. And that's when uh, Dickie Boy says, the hell I want, and he takes out his gun. He's like, it's in the jeans. That's what Joker says. Did you hear that? Dickie Boy is stepping up to take charge of the Bat Family Madness. And they says, do it. Pull the trigger. Now, I really like this scene, guys. Like, it's just really in Joker character. Like, come on. You see the Joker, he's just like, yeah, go for it, kill her. And he's like, pull the trigger as he's in like that pretty much same uh, pose 
that he was in the killing joke, guys. So I really like how Dan Jurgens writes Joker here. It's actually probably one of the best, like, writings of the Joker in a long time. And that's actually saying something. Like, really. Dan Jurgens actually nails it here. Now, as we continue, that's what we see. Barbara, she's like, Dick, you know what that sadistic psycho did to me. You aren't him. You can't do this. And that's what Joker says. Yes, you can. Do it. And then uh, Rick is about to pull the trigger. And that's when a bass says, Rick. You aren't that maniac son. And then she starts just rambling, saying, no, you are not that. You're a hero. You are part of the Bat family. She, she starts to try and make him remember himself. And that's what he says. He starts actually screaming. He's like, God, what's happening? And he grabs his arm. And then he takes the crystal from Bay. And she's like, take it. Make it yours. And then Joker says, this uh, dropped the cur uh, curtain. And Punchline says, time to go. And Joker says, indeed, Punchline, this party is adjourned. So Joker and Punchline just admit defeat for some reason i'm like come on like they didn't joker didn't try one more time to take advantage of dicky boy like come on but still Bay pretty much brought uh dick grayson back from pretty much being crazy which i really like because they could easily just did oh barbara Gordon, she's in the crossfire she brings her back and they have her, that relationship which i really do like that relationship but this whole Rick saga has been the relationship between Rick and Bay. So it'd be kind of dumb to just push it to the side. I like how she's in the forefront here. It's really cool. And Bay's actually a really great character in my opinion. Now, as we continue to see Dicky Boy, he's actually starting to remember his life. How he's Nightwing. How he's been like Prince the Flying Grayson. And then we see this double pace spread that looks really cool. Then we see another one of all these people saying his name. They're like, you are our son, Richard Grayson. Those are, the, those are actually his real parents. Then we see all these people, Commissioner Gore, Damian Wayne, Don Troy, Bay, Barbara Gore, and they all say at once, a dick to us, the finest young man I have the privilege to know, dedicated justice with compassion and love and unquestioned commitment to those around him. Despite those faults, a highly effective operative and a man so sorry that we can't help but love you. And you see that then, Bay says, I know you as Rick, but a name isn't the measure of a man. What matters is your character, regardless of what you call yourself. Even without your memories, you were the same decent man as before. You are the optimism I've always uh, strived to have. From the moment you arrived, you exceeded my every expectation. You were the type of son a father prays for. And that's what Bruce says. Then we have Dick's mother saying, Or a perfect little boy. My Richard, so full of promise and hope. I knew you'd grow up to be admired. And then we got Barbara Gordon saying the last words. Somewhere deep in your mind, beyond the hypnotic reach of the crystal, despite everything, a house, town, the Joker did, you know all this. You know exactly who you are. It's time for you to return. It's time for Dick Grayson to come home. And finally... We have Dick Grayson. He's back. No more Rick Grayson. No more Dickie Boy. We finally have the OG Dick Grayson back. Now, how this issue ends is we then see Dick Grayson. He looks at the crystal and Bay says, Rick, are you okay? He then smashes the crystal to the ground and Bay says, Rick? And then Dick says, not Rick. And he says, Dick. And that's what Barbara says. You did it. And that's what Batman shows up. He's like, he's ours again. And then Dick says, Batman? He says, glad to see you remember. And then Bay says, oh my God, you're him. And Batman's like, yeah. And then Barbara hugs Dick and she's like, all I can say is welcome home. Now Dick says, for the first time since I was shot, it's like I'm me. Like the chains are off. And that's what Bay thinks. She's like, chains, does he even remember? And that's what Bound says, long overdue. This is where you belong, as one of us, one of the family. And then Dick says, nice of you to remember, I thought you'd given up on me. And Bound says, because I did drop it on, on you. And it says, do you really believe that I stayed away from Bloodhaven, that I never checked up on you? You know me better than that. And Dick's like, oh, how often? Turns out Batman's been checking up on this whole entire time. Which I actually really like, because it shows up Batman and Dia abandoned him. He could have easily just been like, alright, he has amnesia, see ya. No, he's actually like, no, I actually care for Dick, uh, Dick Grayson. I care for him. He's my Robin. He's Nightwing. Which is really cool. It shows how important the Batman Robin, aka Nightwing, relationship is. We continue, we see Tim run out of the pretty much the one building. It says, it was the purple wire. I picked that one because I figured that's what the Joker would have done. And I was right. Then he looks at Dick. He's like, the bomb is taken care of. Of, hey, you're back. How do we know it's really you and not some false personality? And Dick says, well, that's the problem with the napkin man. He just doesn't. And that's what Dick says. What does that even mean? And Bound says, it's him. It was the last thing Dick said before he was shot. 
And that's when we see Barbara. She's like, not that there was any doubt in my mind. Bounce says, then we can move on and deal with the Joker. And then Tim says, should we be easier now that we're together if everything's good? And then Dick looks back. He's like, I'm not sure. Where is Bay? And we see Bay leaving and pretty much leaving her life with Rick Grayson behind. She pretty much leaves Gotham. She's like, I hate Gotham. And I, I'm happy that Dick is back to his former self. But at the same time, my relationship with Rick Grayson is over. And it says, next, Nightwing returns. Now, guys, a little nitpick here, right? All right, so this is one image. You see, um, actually, I'll go through it. We got Red Hood on the left. Then we got Barbara Gore. And then we got Batman. We got Tim Drake and then Nightwing, obviously, right? Now, Red Hood is smaller than Barbara Gore. I don't think that's true. Like, come on, that just don't make sense. Um, Batman is super tall here, but the real thing that's throwing me off is Tim Drake is super freaking small. Like, when has Tim Drake been that small, right? Like, he looks like he was switched out for Damien, honestly. I think that's what actually happened. I think Damien was actually supposed to be in this issue, take over the role of Tim Drake, and what actually happened was they switched it out at the last minute. Now, also what could happen, too, is maybe Tim Drake was in Red Hood's role and Red Hood wasn't in, in this. Like, maybe. I don't know. But I just feel like the proportions here and how the artists conveyed this, it, it just don't make that much sense, right? You guys tell me your thoughts on this one panel down below. I may just be nitpicking. I'm not going to take it that much out off the score because of this, but I just had to address it. And I want to know you guys' opinions down below. But guys, with this whole storyline done, Joker punch like going off and the Bat family finally reassembled to fight in the Joker War like penultimate issue in Batman number 95. That was with the penultimate issue to that whole event, which I'm very excited to actually explain or review on this channel when it comes out. I'm really excited to get back to reviewing Nightwing every issue. Like that's gonna be really exciting for me because I love Nightwing guys. I really love the Tim Seeley like whole run at the beginning of Rebirth. And I actually like the whole Judge arc. That was actually really good with Sam Humphreys. Now I hated Benjamin, Benjamin Percy's whole run. Like, that was terrible, guys. But then this whole Rick Grayson thing happened, and that was even worse, and I just jumped off the book. The only reason I jumped on the book again was because this whole Joker War thing. And now I'm officially back in the book with Nightwing officially returning. Hopefully they get a good writer on this series, and it's a great series once again, but I'm just hoping, all right? But either way, I'll be covering Nightwing number 75 when it comes out. Overall, I'm going to this issue, the final issue in the Rick Grayson storyline, this whole saga, a 6.5 out of 10. I thought it was good, but I didn't feel like there was as much in it. Like, the art was okay. Uh, there's some, like, uh, plot holes in the story, but there's still enough action. It's just seeing Nightwing comes back just ups the score for me. But yeah, guys, in the comments below, tell me about this issue. Did you love? Did you hate it? And what are your theories for next issue? Issue number 75. And guys, like if you give a big thumbs up, new channel, subscribe to my next Nightwing comic review. And yeah, guys... Thanks for watching and peace out.